In this video, I'm going to give you five ideas, five practical changes that you can make as soon as today in order to be more productive and well-rounded. I'll give you some examples from my own life as well as some recommendations that I think you'll find very useful. Some of the things I'll say you'll think, oh wow, must be nice, sure, easy for you to say. Other things that I'll say and you'll be like, geez, I don't know how you do it, right? Because your life, your situation is different from mine, of course. So along those lines, the first thing I have to say, and this is not one of the changes, this is just like a general way of thinking, is when you have a conflict, when you have a problem, when you see that you can't do the thing that you want to do, don't give up, don't throw your hands in the air, innovate. That's where the innovation takes place. If you've got a problem, what can you do so that it does work? That's my mindset all the time. So use this video as a piece of inspiration and rather than compare to others and see things that are impossible to you, I hope that you see possibility and that you get ideas that you can walk away with. Now, as I go through each of these tips, each of these changes, I'm going to make several recommendations, which might even overwhelm you. So I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to put all of those recommendations in the description of this video with links, and I will be very clear about what they're about and how you can use them. So you can refer to that down below. And by the way, those recommendations, you might think that those are advertisements. No, I'm not getting paid for this. I'm just a guy who's excited about some things that I found and I want to pass it along. Uh, if I'm gonna to be totally honest, the books, the books link to an Amazon affiliate store, uh, but that's, that's it. Everything else is just an honest recommendation. First, I bet you've heard of this before. Maybe you just need an extra kick in the pants to actually make it for yourself, but I have all but completely walked away from social media. No scrolling on Facebook, no receiving Twitter notifications, and no TikTok, which was probably the hardest thing to give up because TikTok is great, but not for me. These things are a huge time suck. And for me, the benefits aren't even close to outweighing the costs. And then of course, aside from being a time suck, there's also the negativity from the whole atmosphere. However, I did say I've all but completely walked away because I still have to use Facebook as kind of a place where public announcements are put. And then of course I use Messenger to uh, message my family and my friends. So it's not completely gone, but once I kind of got out of the habit of checking it regularly, it became a lot easier to control that habit. Now, if you're wondering, well, where do you get your news? Because a lot of people get their news on social media these days. I do have a great recommendation for you. It's called The New Paper. It gives me a very brief synopsis of the daily news via text. It takes about a minute to read, and I will tell you this much. It is not dramatic at all. It's actually incredibly boring. Well, I mean, we have had some significant events in the last couple of weeks, but when you're reading it in the form of like plain one, two sentence facts, it's just enough to know what's going on in the world and not enough to suck you in, which has been nice, really. I mean, right? Anyway, new paper, uh, link below. Okay, second, and also second most significant change that I've made, although I've gotta say this one with the caveat, that this one's harder to implement on your own because it takes a little bit of a initial investment, as you're about to see what I mean, but having a watch that tracks physical activity. For me, it's an Apple Watch. I got this for Christmas. I have put off getting it for years. I just, I didn't see the point. I didn't see how it was going to help. It does two things for me that oh man, I'm so thankful for. First, uh, since getting this, I've been sleeping regularly. That means for me going to bed at midnight every single night and waking up at 6 a.m. every single day. Six hours of sleep. Now, I don't know if that sounds like a lot to you or if that sounds like a little sleep to you, but the pattern, the consistency of it makes it easy. It means that I can wake up at 6 a.m. every single day, even Saturday, even Sunday, and that gives me the extra time. Because I'm consistent and my body knows what to expect, it's easier for me to wake up at a consistent time and not waste those days where I'm sleeping in to catch up on sleep, so to speak. Uh, 
it takes discipline. I've got to admit, like, it's harder to force myself to go to bed. I've got a pretty busy mind. Although, as you're about to hear in the next tip, uh, I do have a solution for getting to sleep at night. But uh, in addition to being able to establish regular sleep, the watch has helped me keep track of my calories, my activity, and that has really been the kick in the butt that I've needed in order to actually get out and exercise. And now that I'm doing, actually my wife and I both have Apple Watches now, so we compete regularly and we're pretty competitive, so we're trying to like outdo each other for calorie burn and such, and that has been really fun like I'm kind of I've kind of crossed that line between when exercise was a pain and I had to make myself do it and now exercise is like kind of something I look forward to which probably sounds crazy right I look forward to exercise all right number three so number one I said no more social media so you're thinking well gosh what do you do when you're standing in line when you're sitting on the toilet when you have idle time because idle time doesn't go away there's definitely time during the day when i'm basically not doing anything washing the dishes right like oh and speaking of idle time i didn't even mention this but obviously i don't watch tv Uh, i gave up tv like years ago we have netflix that we use my mom's accounts we watch like documentaries or movies occasionally but no tv not for me sometimes on a sunday night though i'll um i'll watch Ip man movies because i'm really into that but not a big tv watcher anyway what do i do with my idle time that's that's some of my most productive time language acquisition apps now If you are interested in studying Japanese, the best app ever is actually online only. It's not an app on the App Store, believe it or not, but it's at wanikani.com for learning kanji. I love this one. I can pick it up and I can do it for a couple of minutes. Uh, There are a whole bunch of other language acquisition apps. Duolingo is one that like everybody knows about. There's also one that I really like and I use it to study Russian called Drops. It's just vocabulary words, but that's all I need to maintain my my uh, Russian speaking just to grow my vocabulary. Those have been great. And then when I don't have free hands that I can use, Audible constantly. I'm listening to Audible when I'm running. I'm listening to Audible when I'm doing dishes and I'm listening to Audible to help me go to sleep at night, which is going to be what I do as soon as I stop shooting this video. Okay, I mentioned spending more time with my wife and kids. So what's the trick? How how do I get to fit that in? Well, this might sound like a shock to you, but I just freaking do it. I just set up the time to commit to spending time with my kids and time with my wife and it involves putting my work aside and it involves ignoring the things in the back of my head that I know have to get done but time is like money some people say time is money time is like money in this sense actually forget money because time and money are both like toothpaste and this is a much easier illustration see when you have enough toothpaste uh, you don't worry about it. You just put toothpaste on your toothbrush and you brush your teeth and everything's taken care of. But when you don't have enough toothpaste, what do you do? Not brush your teeth? Of course not. You figure out how to get the toothpaste out of the, out of the tube. And if it involves a little bit of squeezing, a little twisting, a little bit of like maneuvering with your fingers, you'll figure it out. And you might not even use as much toothpaste as you usually use, but it'll still be a week before you go to Walgreens and replace your tube of toothpaste, right? Same thing with time and money. When you have plenty of it, all's good. You get done what needs to get done. But when you have less of it, you still figure it out. Once you understand that, you can accomplish a whole lot more and do things that reflect your values. If you feel like you have work that has to get done and you sacrifice time to spend with your family, the fact of the matter is you will still figure out how to do the things that have to get done. That's just how 
I, I, that's how I work. It seems to be that's the only way that things can work. If it has to get done, it has to get done, but I'm not going to give up time with my family. Which kind of brings me to the last thing, which is boundaries. Establishing boundaries. Building fences around the things that you want to or feel like you have to get done. So when it comes to uh, the business that I try to run and the people that I work with, this is something that's a value in our company. We want our employees and we want our co-owners to be able to spend time with family. So we put fences around that time and we respect that time. And when people don't respond to a text or an email, that's embodied in our company values and we know that family is important. Now, of course, that's not everybody's priority in a, in a company and you might not be able to control whether or not your boss is understanding when it comes to uh, responding to an email or a text or call. And, and admittedly, that, that is a lot harder. Uh, it is very difficult, and I know from experience, it is very difficult to establish the boundaries in the beginning. But once the boundaries are established, it's not very hard to maintain. Because if, when you say, I'm sorry, that's a boundary for me, most people understand what that means. That, that sends a very clear message. So what are the boundaries for me? I don't do work on the weekend. When a child has a day off from school, I spend special time with them, whether that's going out for breakfast or going to the library together or going out for ice cream or whatever it is, we spend some special time together. My wife and I deliberately work on our marriage all the time. We do that by finding activities that we enjoy together. We also do that by setting aside time that we can talk and develop and improve our communication skills. Communication, man, it's like a well-oiled machine because if you don't oil a machine, it starts to break down and it starts to be less efficient. But when it's well-oiled, it can run more efficiently for a whole lot longer. If you need some help with your own marriage and maybe you're in a situation where your spouse isn't doesn't seem very cooperative and uh, maybe you feel like you're between a rock and a hard place because you don't know how to move forward without that cooperation. The book that I recommend for you is called Connecting Through Yes, uh, which is all about the situation that I just described. Again, a link in the description. And in fact, while I'm talking about boundaries and while I'm talking about family and children as well, uh, Parenting with Love and Logic, a great book for boundaries and uh, teaching children as well. And by the way, if you do happen to have your own business and you need some guidelines for how to run it, uh, I mean, this is canon, so you've probably already read this one, but if you haven't read The E-Myth, uh, I mean, that's that's um, it's a must read. It's like an entrepreneur Bible. Read The E-Myth. So that's what I've got for you. I'm trying to be helpful. I hope you understand my intent. Um, obviously, some of these things are going to be harder to implement than others. If you have an accommodation, a modification, something that's working for you that I didn't talk about, will you please leave a note in the comments for other people to read and for me to read as well? I would really appreciate that. Oh, and you know what? Other productivity apps. Uh, that's something else I'm really interested in. But if you like this video, I make videos every week on this channel. It's a channel about innovation. Uh, so if you subscribe, I will see you next week, and that would be great. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, take care. Bye.